Alice in Wonderland has been adapted many times in the history of both live action and animation cinema. From the first black and white silent film version in 1903, to the 1933 version starring Gary Cooper and Cary Grant, to the most famous Disney animation adaptation in 1951, to the nostalgic TV movie made in 1985, to Tim Burton's blockbuster in 2010, which heavily utilized CGI technology. Although fantastical and fairy tale like, to me none of them quite capture the essence of the nonsensical, dreamlike quality in Lewis Carroll's original novel. None except for Alice, made in 1988 by the Czech stop motion animation master, Jan Schwenkmeyer. Most people's first impression of Alice was probably. a strong sense of creepiness. And it has a lot to do with the medium of Schwenkmeyer's films the combination of live-action filmmaking and stop-motion animation. Unlike Disney's hand-drawn animation or Burton's CGI characters and environments, every character, prop and production design you see in Alice were made from tangible objects. This creepiness we perceive stems from the uncanniness of how the real, tangible, inanimate objects and puppets in the film move with life. According to Sigmund Freud, when mental properties are being projected onto the inanimate world, causing confusions between the animate and the inanimate, the real and the imagined, this ambiguity leads to anxiety and thus our perception of the uncanny. Such ambiguity is ever present in the world of Alice, which is a rather accurate depiction of the mechanism in dream production. Real life objects and our emotional experiences with them inspire dreams. Those objects, mostly toys and card games, were placed in the real world of Alice's room before she entered her dream, and they were animated and brought to life in her dream world, the Wonderland. Throughout Alice's journey in her Wonderland, the characters made up of objects and puppets that she met were always full of mystery and even potential danger. The constant motif of entrances and doors in Alice is strongly suggestive of entering another world, another reality, one that is suffused with unpredictability. Representation of such entrances in the form of desk drawer further enhanced the surreal and strange quality of this transition. As Alice traveled from the real world to the different sets of dream worlds, the desk drawer also discharged objects with mysterious messages or qualities behind them to progress the narrative. A great metaphor for the novelty and challenges young children face in every stage of their life, especially in their early years. This overwhelming brand new experience of objects that are considered as normal in the adult world manifested in wild imaginations in Alice's dream, a dream that specifically belongs to children. Because only through a child's point of view, we can perceive the infinite possibilities of magical quality that lie in the objects, which adults merely deem as utilitarian. This theme of infantile dream weaves perfectly with Schwankmeyer's philosophy of animation. He said that he doesn't actually animate stuff, but simply draw out the inner life of the objects themselves. And you should listen to the object, understand its quality and experience first before animating it. Schwankmeyer's films have few dialogues, so objects replace words and become the primary vocabulary for ideas. This explains why he especially likes old-fashioned, vintage, often broken and useless objects with strong tactile qualities, with marks left behind by the passage of time. The old objects naturally have more emotional content and scattered memories left behind on them by their past users, thus they are more eloquent in the telling of their stories. The intricate textures in the close-ups of his props provoke us to touch them with our eyes and our imagination, and they bring us back to our first experience with this world when we were in our mother's wombs. Before we could see, hear, talk or taste, we could feel with our touch. And when we were in our early childhood, we played by taking a piece of lifeless toy, moving them by hand and imagining the life inside the toy. There's an intense physicality in our early experience with the world around us. The world of Alice draws us back to our early childhood and primal subconscious experiences. A sense of realism and intimate contact, but also combined with the liberation of imagination otherwise repressed by adults. Now this version of Alice was not a faithful adaptation of Alice in Wonderland in terms of its content or plot but I still believe that its portrayal of the Wonderland is superior to all the other versions of Alice in Wonderland adaptations. If you want to know why, 
Listen to the film's paradoxical opening line again. Abych nezapomněla. Teď musíte zavřít oči. Jinak nic neuvidíte. The best movie depictions of dreams are more than just fantasies and fairy tales. They contain the subconscious truth to our lives. Like the other movie directors who are master of surrealism, like Buñuel, Fellini, and Lynch, Schwankmeyer understands that dreams are not found outside reality, but only discovered in the dynamic core of it. In his words, I just say that my goal is to make surrealistic documents. Utilizing the advantage of his medium, which combines live action with stop motion filmmaking, Schwankmeyer's Alice has both the intimate, tangible texture of a live action film and the sensual, magical dark alchemy of breathing life into non animated objects. The cinematic vision we get is greater than the sum of its parts. It's grounded but also playful. It's raw but also exquisite. It's innocent and nostalgic but also chaotic and terrifying. Most importantly, it's hypnotic because it transcends the boundary between reality and fiction. Because what we are seeing is the wonder of our childhood. It is our infantile dream.